Okay, today's video, we're gonna talk about bid strategy mis misconfigured Google Ads. Why this costs you money if you're use if you have the warning bid strategy misconfigured Google Ads showing on the campaign status inside your account. In short here, the reason for this is, is because if you have a shared campaigns with a shared budget, if you have a varied bid strategy, whether you're using max conversions, max conversion value, manual bidding, which or or target impression bidding, if you want to add that in there. If you have different bidding strategies, you should you can get this warning. But in particular, this is when you use a portfolio bidding strategy itself, where you have certain campaigns sharing the same bidding strategy. And then another campaign, which is in the same shared budget that does not have that same portfolio bidding strategy, okay? Because it confuses the system. The system, when you use shared budgets, it's trying to figure out how to distribute that budget over the campaigns that you have with the shared budget. It's trying to basically pick favorites and send some of the more of the budget to certain campaigns than others. And it can't decide real well if you have different bidding strategies because it doesn't understand how to properly cross compare the performance of the different campaigns. Okay? If you have this warning, it costs you money, not because and, pro and uh, profit that you're leaving on the table, not because of the warning itself, but because you are using a shared daily budget in the first place. I have talked about and spoken against daily shared budgets in your Google Ads account on many different videos if you watch this channel, primarily because of just what I said. It actually will pick favorites of certain campaigns to send the budget to, and unless you ran your campaigns for a really long time, and you've had hundreds of conversions on all your campaigns within that shared budget campaign set, the system's gonna pick to send most of the budget to the campaigns that have the lowest cost per conversion or highest ROAS, or uh, or just most conversions in general, and not to the campaigns that don't have conversions, but a lot of times the campaigns that don't have any conversions yet, or a high cost per conversion, it's just simply because they haven't had enough clicks yet. I wish the system wouldn't be so um, so judgmental, but it's, it's trying to get, it's, it's siding towards the, what's getting you results more so and less on what's not getting you results, which naturally makes sense. But if you're not with that type of setup, you're basically leaving so much on the table. And even though the campaigns that have co good cost per conversion, you'd actually have a better overall cost per conversion. If you were also giving the campaigns that don't have any conversions yet, or where the cost per conversion is high, but you haven't had very many conversions, some time to get some more clicks, because they would actually even out, the cost per conversion would be similar to the campaigns that Google's preferring already. And because you have budget distributed over more campaigns, the actual ROI you would have from the entire campaign set would be better, okay? So therefore, you're, in my opinion, you're better off individually setting individual budgets for each campaign, even though, yes, I understand it's harder to control your ad budget if you don't do that, which is the main why, reason why people use shared budgets and the main benefit thereof you get from it is so that you can make the uh, Google system isn't going to just choke off the budget on campaigns that ha haven't had very many clicks or the cost per conversion is high, but it, it is skewed, skewed because you haven't had very many conversions and clicks on those campaigns yet. So you just, and, and with that, what I will normally do is campaigns that have had enough time to get traction. I'll, I'll make that the, I'll put like 80% of my budget towards that. And then 20% of my budget will go to campaigns that haven't had enough clicks to get a lot of traction yet so that I'm building up some history on the new campaign. So for future, a growth of the account, but it's n there's not so much budget dedicated to it though that it's going to draw down my or ROI of our account as a whole too much. So it, it segregates it and limits it to a certain you know amount of our account that's going to run inefficient. We our 
our company that we're working for can afford to have a certain lower ROI that's not quite as high as what it, sh it could be in order to, for long-term growth that we are going to consistently want built in within our account. You know, first six months we run a campaign, it won't run profitable, but it will after six months. Then that campaign goes into our main stable of campaigns that are profitable. Then we roll out new campaigns that are going to then be used to add to our stable of profitable campaigns another six months later. And then we keep going through that process. So naturally I'll just, you know, the, the campaigns that aren't doing well yet, we'll limit that to like 10, 20% of the budget. And we'll just put the daily budget where it needs to be at any given time to remain 10 to 20% of the total budget at any given time. And we'll just monitor the performance of those campaigns. If a certain campaign breaks through the barrier of it being consistently profitable, then we can add it to the 80% and then and maybe replace it with another campaign or you know, obviously not keep it just relocated to 10, 20% of our ad budget. We'll let it run, we'll let it rip full blast. When you're using a shared budget itself, you don't have that same level of control that we know that gets us a, mi a good mixture of current performance and long-term growth in the account. So um, if you have a varied bid bidding strategy, having to, mostly having to do with a portfolio bidding strategy that's mixed in with other campaigns, not in a portfolio bidding, uh, using portfolio bidding, uh, that's the time when you get this bid strategy misconfigured warning and having this warning does affect your, you in terms of the profitability of your account. Uh, just from the standpoint that you don't want to use shared budgets, like I said, because the spend will be lopsided and you don't want the algorithm just to willy nilly decide, you know, which campaigns to push and which ones are not. Unless you, all of the campaigns in your shared budget, like I was saying, have had run for years and years lots and lots of data. And then at that point, yes, it can run the good campaigns a little bit more aggressively, but until you've had a hundred conversions plus on each individual campaign, it's going to run the spend lopsided. You're never really going to get traction on the newer campaigns that haven't had enough time to mature yet. Whereas, you know, naturally that's what you would want, but you still need new campaigns that are going to run at a loss at any given time to build long-term growth in your account given certain campaigns will have a growth mode and then they'll plateau off. And then if you don't have new campaigns that are always in a growth mode, then your, can't, your results will plateau. So with that, like I said, you always want, it's the best way, in my opinion, to run an account is to always have new things that you're testing. That's 10, 20% of your budget that you aren't expecting to get a return from at all so that when you plateau, your results plateau with your current campaigns that are profitable, you've got new campaigns to keep the growth, keep going up and to the right, so to say. And the losers in, in, in marketing and advertising expect results on ROI to, ha to happen right away on campaigns. People think Google Ads is a, like a light switch or a faucet that you turn on. It's all predicated on machine learning now. If you've been on a keyword such as red shoes, it's not just showing up for red shoes or not. It's there's a thousand people that search for red shoes as an individual keyword on an ongoing basis. You're trying to find what section of the people searching for that exact keyword are profitable, whether that be old, young, rich, poor, from Texas, California, whatever. And you, you, you go through that testing mode where the campaign isn't profitable for three, six, not even nine months so that you can eventually find the portion of that keyword that works. And then now it just works and works and works. And you can profit from that campaign and specific keyword for the next five, 10 years. So that running it at a loss for six months to get five years of profitable results out of it, particularly as you can scale the budget up higher because you've got the campaign relegated to a smaller budget at the beginning, it makes it worth it. And this is the procedure that you go through to, cons to walk up the profitability of an account over time. You got to have stuff that doesn't work for a while to optimize and find the 10, 20, 30% of it that's going to work and which parts aren't. And a lot of it just comes down to the Google's machine learning and them on their side with the right conversion data that you're feeding into your account, them figuring out what portion of what you're doing works and what doesn't work. Or you as a human uh, 
you know, uh, ad strategist to weed out stuff that doesn't work on your site as well. You, the algorithm will optimize and you, you as a human user will optimize and together you'll figure out what you did works. It's not a matter of if things work, it's generally what portion of you, what you did you know, will work. And it might be 10% of what you did will work, but you can't figure it out until you run the ads for a while. The average loser is gonna say, oh, it didn't work after two weeks and then they're gonna shut it off. Whereas if they would have ran it for another six months, it would have produced an extra $100 a day of profit for them for the next five, 10 years. But they were thinking too short term. So if you use shared budgets, you're gonna get, it's gonna be more profitable short term the less, way less profitable long term. If campaigns are doing well on top of that, you have to be careful not to screw up your progress because you can hamper campaigns switching over to a shared budget given it's going to screw with the dynamics of the algorithm and how the ads are running the ads that you have in your account right now because then it'll start to pick favorites, favorites over certain campaigns. Uh, similar to that, campaigns that are doing well can also be capped to go along with that as well. So it's just, for all those reasons, it's much better to just set up manual bidding on each campaign so you can control how much budget a campaign gets, whether it should be getting a lot or a little. And because, you know, more so on the, on the limitation side, if you have things in a shared budget, a campaign that's doing really well, which should run totally unmetered, can be capped artificially because you got it in that damn shared budget. So that's why shared budgets suck. That's why if you have bid strategy misconfigured, you're going to lose money with that warning, but it's because you're using shared budgets for all the drawbacks that shared budgets have along with it. So anyway, that's the main things I can tell you about this particular warning. If you have any questions about uh, what I shared today or any ad related questions, feel free to leave me a comment below. I get back to every single person who leaves me a question or comment on this channel, usually within 24 hours time. Um, I'll use my 15 years of ad experience to try to, as best as I can to put you on the right track with what you're doing. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, you should, you absolutely should as the information I provide for you on this channel is coming from somebody who just does ad testing all day long as my sole job, which doesn't sound very unique until you know the inside of what's going on with YouTube and you know, gurus talking about online advertising online. They're not actually running any kind of ad strategy for themselves. They're just talking about it. They get information from third-hand sources. It's not really relevant information. Same thing with professional YouTubers, people that are selling courses. It's all mostly BS. You cannot get more relevant information than you're going to get from me on this channel because I just do ad testing 40 hours a week for a few dozen accounts that I'm personally in charge of getting results on and then sharing with you directly what works as well as what doesn't work. So if you're going to subscribe to any channel, if you want to make millions of dollars running ads for your business, this is the channel to subscribe to that will get you that information better than anything else and you sh therefore should subscribe now. Uh, with that, by the way, I also have a blog on my site at guaranteedppc.com slash blog where you can find other information for myself on, but in more of like a step-by-step, -step, here's a certain strategy that, will, that you can follow that works, that it works every time with screenshots, everything else. If you like the channel, you should certainly like my blog as well. It's, it's very useful as well for most of the people that check it out. Beyond that, uh, I run an ad agency here. It's called Guaranteed PPC. We offer... That is guaranteed PPC for our, our clients or online advertising management for our clients. We do not charge our clients fees until we can get them an additional amount of profit from their ads before paying our agency. And I mean profit, not revenue. The only catch is, is that we got to know we can get great results for our client up front. But if our contact, uh, client contacts us, we'll take the... We'll look at their account. We'll give them an eight quarter projection on what kind of results we can get for their firm in terms of an increase in profit. We'll see if it's worth it for them to hire us in terms of our fees. Can we increase your profit enough to pay for our fees? We'll give you that. And that in and itself is, does, ha, comes with no cost. If you're interested in that kind of assessment, you can reach out to me at guaranteeppc.com. I'd be happy to provide it to you. As a side, if you're not looking to work with an ad agency like mine, where we just do all the work for you and get you the results, without having to do anything, you can also reach out to us because we have hundreds of different ad templates that work for hundreds of different niche markets. If we worked in your niche market before, you could take the exact ads, landing pages, campaign templates, all of it that work for your niche, copy and paste everything we've got 
in your niche to your account from a different geographic area that you're not in and get the same results we are, of which we can tell you the results you're going to get up front with it and save you tons of time, money, and effort to figure out everything. Many times we had to figure out over years and spend millions of dollars to figure out in terms of ad spend on how to get results for your market. So in the last 10 years, we've worked in 100 plus niche markets. The chances are fairly good. We've worked in your niche market before and you should definitely at least reach out to us to see what results we got in your market. If so, to potentially get the template from us that we sell for a one-time fee. You can get everything we've got in terms of results for your niche market. If you're trying to get into a, neat, a new business, by the way, starting with one of these templates is like the easiest way to do it because we got proven results to sell a product that we know will sell. And as long as you're in a different country than you know, our client that is in a different country that they're not going to be in another country, you could sell that same product in another country and get turnkey results. And product, a product that you could easily source from China and get, that's no problem to get. Or if you want to start a business selling leads, we've got several people that take our templates, sell leads using them, and make a good money amount of money doing that, just that by itself, which is another great opportunity. It's a great passive income business idea. Once you sell leads to a buyer and they're buying them and they know the leads are good, there's nothing to do. The campaign just runs. The tricky part is selling the leads, of course, because that takes some salesmanship. But it's a great business idea that works for several people that bought in templates from us specifically. So anyway, if you're interested in any of those opportunities, you can also reach out to me at guaranteeppc.com. I'll wrap everything up with that. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you on the next one. See you later.